picked the wrong weight and quit sniffing glue. Well, good morning, everybody. How are you doing this week? Uh, we are going to be tackling something that I promised I would do shortly after I got back from England uh, to uh, Keith over at Cosmic Scale Models. Uh, I swore that I would make up some masks for these uh, windows, and these wouldn't be painting masks. These would be replacement masks. You would cut them out of black vinyl, and you would just lay them down in the uh, recesses here. And that way you don't have to worry about trying to paint this really fine line of framework around the windows. You would spray all of this white and then put those down. So I'm finally getting around to that this week. And this will be my return to, uh, to return to space, as it were. So um, I've done my first set of scans and um, we'll get ready to plot the first run and we'll see how close I came and then we'll start doing some refining. Alrighty, I've got my masks done. Now as usual, it took three-ish iterations. It usually does. Uh, I start with a pretty close estimate and then I tweak. Sometimes I over tweak and then I have to pull it back a little bit. But um, I've got three rounds of uh, templates and the third is usually the charm and I've got all these now these are ready to be translated into the black vinyl I just use the yellow vinyl because it's easier to work with and I save the uh, black vinyl for when I need it but this is the the back windows uh, this will be covered up with a plate this is where the laser comes out of uh, this is out of where the laser comes I don't know the exact uh, grammar for that should I make a black patch for that if you're not going to use the laser uh, if you're not going to use the laser then that uh, is that a white panel let me see what what does Keith say about this um, Keith has it as a solid white panel so that you wouldn't need to black it out so therefore I ain't gonna black it out. It's just the rear cover of this uh, laser hatch right here. So if you're gonna do that, then you'll leave that white. Okay, so there's that. There are the front windows looking very lovely. And now we're ready to start doing some base coating and uh, get on with the actual painting of this thing and the building, therefore, of it. And, um, Let's see, there's some parts I can put together now before I even, before I even uh, prime this thing. And I'm wondering if I need to prime it in uh, white or do I need to prime it in gray? I think if I prime it in gray, that gets me a uh, appreciating uh, that I think will be nice. It also uh, helps cover in some of these dark recesses that won't be easy to get to. So I've been spraying the inside of the cockpit or the passenger area to see what's visible and what isn't. And when you put this wall on here like this, now there's a decal that goes here so this wall needs to be white. Uh, this can be gray I suppose. What I'm seeing is if you look in and you put all of this together you can still kind of see in behind. You can see what's going on into that wing. See back there, you can see what's going on. So I think I'm going to need to take some sheet stock and just put up a divider, just put up a fake wall right here. Something that, since I can't get paint into that inside of that wing, I can just cover it up with something. Just make like an arced piece of plastic there that will fake that back wall. And I think I need to do the same thing here. I might just put a uh, like a cockpit door. That would kind of make sense that there was a second door inside there. So I can just make a fake wall that'll be inside of here with a door on it. Uh, that will take care of uh, the fact that you can't get paint inside there very well. 
but uh, this this is an excuse for me to add a little bit of color break up to it since everything here is so white I want to be able to uh, add a little bit of something something just so that uh, um, when we're staring at it everything isn't completely white now I, I really like how Keith has made those doors fit like that I mean it's almost a shame almost a shame that um, I'm going to be posing this with the door open but uh, you open this up and fold this back down I'm going to put some sort of little piston in there to hold that door open I may look to see what the gosh, I may look to see what the actual physical prop had it probably didn't have anything much beyond a stage hand with a rope holding that door open but we'll see also noticed something I wasn't wild about I don't know if this is something we can work on Keith but uh, when you put these two halves together just like this you might have already taken care of it in in the uh, uh, other versions but there's nothing really in there or there there's no detail but in behind that and again trying to get some paint in there is not easy so I'm wondering if there's some sort of detail we could put in there just in behind this area right in there so uh, some opportunities for scratch building that's always fun Ready work is progressing on the visitor shuttle I've got the uh, retaining wall put in back here and I've put a door in the front of here so that you don't see around the corners that you can't get paint into such that when you do this go ahead and put these together that looks like a finished compartment back in there now rather than seeing the wing and by the same token you don't see uh, up into that front wing when you look in there now you see if a, a uh, uh, well, you, you don't see anything because that door is being blocked off. Now, you do see a light leak there, and I'm going to have to uh, do something with that when I put these things together. I might, that, a, a bead of, uh, uh, well, let's see, if I took a bead of the, um, uh, getting paint in there is going to be difficult. So, I'm going to have to make myself happy with the paint job before I put those two things together but uh, I'm thinking that maybe hmm maybe I could dress that up if I dress that up with a with a really thin uh, piece of molding maybe that would close that gap if not then I can just put some uh, not JB maybe JB weld will do it but uh, maybe tulip and just smear it in there but anything that I do is gonna goosh into the inside of there so I need to make sure that that is pretty tar pretty darn tight before I uh, glue those pieces together morning everybody it is Wednesday it is very cold outside so cold that I can't even think about taking this thing outside to do any priming <laughs> out of the rattle can so I'm gonna have to do everything with uh, the smaller Tamiya paints kind of indoors maybe you know whip the window open just for a second to do some spraying but here's the thing these uh, these 3d printed kits that I get from Keith um, they don't need a lot of priming they don't need the same type of uh, uh, of uh, I mean these are very smooth these are very clean they don't need the type of uh, base coating that a cast resin kit needs so uh, I, I feel we could maybe skip a step and still be okay um, I want to start putting big chunks together the next logical big chunk I can put is to put this onto the back side and I've just done a little bit of pre-shading here so that when I put the white on here some of these uh, contours will uh, maybe look a little bit better and I think I'm gonna uh, do a large amount of graying right in through here um, this stairwell wall needs to be white because there's a nice decal that goes there 
and by the same token this stairwell wall needs to be white you can see this is the door I put over it yesterday um, so that when all of this goes together the uh, stairwell is still uh, visible because we've got that lovely decal to go in there so what I'd like to do is paint those white and then mask them in such a way that keeps them nice and clean so that I uh, don't get any uh, gray paint on it when I go to put the overall coat on uh, I'm happy with the interior it's not gonna be there's no lighting going on inside of here so uh, what we've got is good enough uh, I'm gonna glue the stairwell in in such a way that it's open this will be sitting and I'm gonna have some guards you know I can't do a big diorama because I don't have the space for it but I can maybe put like a line of soldiers here uh, that I can uh, move around as needed all right I think the time has come to uh, glue at least some of this together now the back um, side here I can go ahead and glue onto the edge the uh, the thing is this is going to result in seams now I know those seams are there we can embrace those seams because if you believe that the visitors made these modular as in fact Keith has done then it's natural to see that um, I did a resin kit of this long long time ago it was a big much, much bigger version I think it was time slip I'm not sure I did a much bigger uh, and they had uh, panel lines in it, and that was about all they did it wasn't made to be done it wasn't nearly as elaborate as this it was a simple shell now um, I am not going to try to um, fill in these seams the seams that are that are inevitable I feel as long as they are uh, even and consistent then yes I can I can justify them as uh, manufacturer detail rather than um, something that needs to be corrected or filled in so that's how I'm treating it now it's going to sit something like this and of course I've got the uh, stairs and the hatch to go in and yeah the gap are a little bit larger than they would be in real life I get that and larger than they probably are on the uh, filming models but again I don't think the filming models were this elaborate either so um, oops let me there we go um, so my my take on it is as long as they're nice and tight like that I don't feel the need to uh, fill those in with putty I think painting will be sufficient so I'm going to go ahead and glue in uh, at least the back now I, if I wanted to glue in the front that would also mean trapping the stairs and the hatch in in place and I don't know if 100% sure that I'm ready to do that yet so uh, that's kind of why I'm waiting I should either do the front or the back I don't want to do them all at one time so my question is actually if I did that that would mean trapping yeah I think what I want to do is do the back side first and then I can trap the uh, the two movable parts or well they're not going to be movable because I'm going to uh, uh, freeze them in position but to find that position I really need to have the whole thing kind of sitting so uh, yeah let's uh, let's do the back half first okay so I've decided to, do, to go ahead and putty this seam anyway um, I might end up scribing a line back in there just to re-indicate it but the joint the glue joint wasn't as clean as I was hoping this this front joint is very clean and I think I can get away with uh, just gluing it and leaving it be I'm wondering if I should go ahead and bite the bullet and put these sections in and go ahead and glue this up all at once hmm if I did that let's see do that if I went ahead and glued this in and let it sit you know that might help me when it comes time to do my sanding on this to have 
this whole thing put together. Yeah, I think I'm gonna. I'm not gonna glue the door open yet, but I can go ahead and use these band, the rubber bands that I was using to hold it all together. I can go ahead and glue these sections in and leave that sit, and that'll be a great place to leave it sit uh, over. Not a well, maybe overnight before I get back to it. But it'll let this uh, putty uh, cure and this glue joint uh, cure at the same time. So yeah. Let's go ahead and glue this together. Okay, so none of this needs any glue. Any any of the uh, CA will have to happen around here. But <laughs> this is where the uh, gangplank and the steps are. So we don't want to have any glue in either of those uh, places. Particularly since this will be open anyway. So yeah, we're going to be very careful to keep any glue away from those joints. And then just do it around the sides into that point. Okay, nothing to it but to glue it. We're going to go ahead and pop this in, keep it out of the way. Pop that in, keep it out of the way. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I need to make sure that that is no touchy. Okay. Hmm. I should go ahead and put some glue under where that area is going to be on the top. So let's go ahead and do that too. Let's get these legs out of the way. Uh, right under where, he said under where, right under in this area here. Okay. That's it. That down and that open. Let's go ahead and put some rubber bands on this to hold it together. And let's see. I know I've got more of them here. Here we go. Okay, pull these nice and tight. There we go. Although I do want that to come down. Okay. We're ready to let this sit for a while. I'm wondering if I shouldn't put some uh, of the uh, really thin CA down into that joint. But it seems to be Seems to be holding up just fine without it. Hello everybody, it's Thursday, the gateway to the weekend. How y'all doing today? I know it's been a scant moment since uh, the last edit, but you know how that goes. Uh, so this morning, I did some reference checking. I pulled out the old DVD player, or the old uh, well, the DVD player that's on the computer. But I pulled out the old DVDs, and I'm watching uh, the uh, the original, the original miniseries of uh, V and um, enjoying the, the great dogfight that they had towards the end of the second set. Now, I realized that I had uh, puttied in this seam yesterday, and um, this is the one seam that is the most visible on the filming model because that's where the break is whenever they add cargo modules or, or whatever. They break it at that point. This seam here... Is probably uh, well luckily it is a very clean seam on this kit but this is if you were gonna putty a seam you would probably putty that one uh, with the exception of the area where the door is now they never showed at least not in my limited uh, experience today 
they never showed this side door opening. It was only ever open on this side. And I'm willing to believe that. Now, when they did the troop module, the troop module had doors on it themselves that uh, that's, where the, that's where the cargo and the people came out of. So um, I, this, this door is a possibility, but it wasn't uh, anything I'd seen. So we have um, this, uh, this seam here that I have puttied and sanded this morning. Uh, I may end up ironically going back in and scribing a line back in there because that line is uh, that line. It makes sense. And the uh, the other thing I marveled at when watching this was how all of these windows were black from the outside, but of course clear through the inside. So they were very just heavily tinted because when uh, uh, when they're doing the dog fight at the end with uh, where is my laser? Uh, it's here somewhere with this gun. Uh, sticking out of the back hole here. It's like that. Um, when when they're firing like that, the um, pilot has a perfectly clean view, and the, you can see perfectly out from the inside, but it is black when you look at it from uh, the outside. So we're going to be in good shape there with the black vinyl. Um, I've left the yellow vinyl on here because of all these coats of paint when they uh, uh, as they start to accumulate um, when it comes time to put the black on this will be nice and smooth and clean and bare vi bare resin and uh, I can peel these up and I can put the black back down over top of that so I started this morning sanding the uh, seam and then I sprayed a gray uh, layer of paint over that so I could see what might still need to be cleaned up a bit and that has given me uh, the chance to see any of the the bumps from the putty that I could sand down leaving the seam is still going to be there but I wanted to fill in some of the areas around that seam and uh, now that that has been cleaned I can put one more I think I'm going to use the uh, just the regular spray can primer over top of the whole thing and then I can start my white coat on top of that I think I might go with the white sand well primer just a nice light blissful coat over that same thing on the top here and then I can uh, give that one more light sanding and we'll be ready to hit it with a polar white I did notice that the uh, when the cargo module is on the cargo module seemed to be like an insignia white it was a little bit creamier but the front half and the back half that made up the uh, the shuttle here uh, the fighter that was uh, a polar white. It was a very cool white. So um, I'm going to do the same thing here on the top. Hush you. I'm going to uh, do a nice light even coat of a gray just to help give me some undercoating or some pre-shading under, under areas where uh, we might have some seams. Even though I noticed that on the, uh, again, on the, the studio model, that they used um, it was very white appliance white and uh, almost a plasticky looking thing but I'm gonna make mine maybe a little bit a uh, little bit grittier than that alrighty so you see we've got a nice light gray coat on the whole ship and we're gonna let that sit and dry for a while and then we will come back I'm gonna do a nice uh, one last sanding with a very high grit sandpaper one of these sanding sponges that will get in around all the curves and uh, I'll go ahead and do this pull that down uh, another thing I learned from the series watching it is that the door seems to stop about there it does not go all the way up so it comes out so that the uh, this plane right here let me get my pointing stick out this plane right here seems to be uh, so that that's straight out and uh, it's not it's not uncommon to see them kind of ducking in and out of the shuttle so uh, that's completely appropriate um, of course that inside wall here needs to be white all the way out to the edge and I might have to touch some of that up when it comes to uh, painting the white although I think once I start painting the white here it might hit the overspray just like the gray did and take care of that for me but there are decals that go inside there so that's going to be fine and another thing now it could have been 
the color balance on the uh, um, on the DVD, but the jumpsuits of the visitors looked more of an orange red than they did of a crimson. So uh, I think they were more of uh, let me see if I can find a suitable color here. Uh, more of this red than um, than typical Tamiya red. Um, some this would be probably what I would use for a base coat, and then I would highlight it with this red to brighten it up a bit. Still had the black boot, back boot, uh, black boots, but it's an early morning. Black boots, black boots, black boots. Uh, still had black boots, black belts. Hush you. Um, black uh, accents, black helmets, uh, but more of an orange red than a uh, straight red. Like I said, it could be the color balance on the DVD because when they're showing the visitor showing up for the first time and they're doing the big welcome, I noticed that the red, white, and blue flags that they had up, the red on those also seemed to be a little bit warmer. So uh, I'm willing to believe it was... Uh, Closer to a true red, but I think uh, uh, definitely want to stay away from the maroons. Fire red. I like that fire red. That's a good color. That might be a, a good uh, a good compromise. But I want to keep all of the red far away from my airbrush until the very end because I want to do all of this white first. And uh, the last thing you want to do is compromise your white paint job by having any sort of red speckles on it. Now there are red insignias and I'm already prepared to paint those on. I've got those plotted and uh, uh, I will be able to paint the insignias on. I think there's one here, there's one on the nose and then I think I think there's one on one top of one wing and the bottom of another wing. Yeah it's the top of this wing, top of the nose and then I think it may be the underside of the other wing. I'd have to double check that. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're going to let this dry and then uh, come back to it in a little bit. While that's drying, I'll take this opportunity to show off my very ancient DVDs. This was the old snapper case, the uh, Warner Brothers snapper case. I will give you an idea of just, just how old this is. We've got the uh, original miniseries. We've got the final battle here, which was the second miniseries and then we went straight into the series and this as I recall I had uh, I was able to get uh, Jane Badler to sign for me when she showed up at a local convention yeah this is all the way through to the end of the final of the um, complete series so yes I've been re-immersing re-immersing myself in the uh, the uh, V mythos here. Well, I just had mail call, and uh, as I projected last week, I got my lighting from Evans in today. Uh, I won't tell you everything that came in it. These are things that will be used in the future. This is just a repl replenishment of uh, some, uh, I guess, the chip sized cool whites. These are all specialized, but I gotta tell you that. Um, through my own ignorance, uh, I ordered quite, well, I got more than I thought I was getting. Uh, it's all there. They, they, did not, uh, they did not mess up the order. The order is exactly what I asked for. But what I asked for included more than I thought. Um, I was wanting to get some, you know, flashback and forth lights. And uh, I got entire sets. All I was looking for was the... Uh, uh, the lights for let's just say an ambulance at the top I was only expecting the two but I also got the lights for the headlights and the uh, uh, tail lights as well so uh, I'm going to have flashing lights for quite a while more so than I actually need in the kit this is for so uh, I'm good for a while so uh, that's coming up in the near future it won't be right away it won't probably won't be till spring because uh, it's it's uh, gonna include gonna need much cleanup and it's too cold to do inside the house so uh, I'll put this in the box with the kit alrighty so I've taken off the masks that I had the yellow masking that I used on top of the uh, 
areas that I'll be replacing with black and uh, I did that because I want the polar white that I'm getting ready to put on top of all of this I want that to kind of cover up or settle into these areas and I'm afraid that if I had uh, didn't if I didn't do that and I put the black over top of it that we might end up with too much of a step around everything so uh, plus uh, if there was any area where that white didn't get um, it would show up more glaringly so what you're seeing here is um, the insignia white that's going to act as an undercoat and then I can go ahead and dust the top of that with the polar white and uh, then I think what I'm going to do is make a black skinny mask that I'm going to run just as a black line over top of the the join here between the front and the back um, I think that'll look interesting but uh, let me quickly put a, a white top coat on this and we'll pick it up from there kids it's Friday it's the last work day of the week it's the last work day on the uh, V shuttle and boy is my face red no I'm just kidding I took a minute to uh, put a nice red base coat on the visitors all of the different figures I don't know how many of these I'll actually use because then again uh, where I'm at is with spaces I don't really have a lot of room to set up a big diorama but I want to have these painted and you know put back just in case I can set them up somehow um, flicking through the series checking references uh, made me nostalgic for the days when you could tell the bad guys by the red hats they were wearing um, <coughs> excuse me uh, I know some of these cases it was black hats but you know what I'm going um, the uh, the shuttle itself is in the other room I've put a nice another white coat over the top of it I think we're gonna be ready to uh, finish that up today painting up the landing gear now of course it is that mustard yellow with uh, I just need to paint some silver details on those pistons not on the pistons but on the uh, brackets here the one on the side there and the one on the back I want to go ahead and paint those silver uh, one of the neat uh, uh, sets set pieces that uh, Keith makes is the world's famous you know uh, prop that's in everything it's in a uh, hundred different shows and if you ever wanted to have your own, even if you have no interest in V whatsoever, but you want to make your regular one space station, or you want to make your Alpha Beta Moon base, or anything that uses this prop, he's got it. Uh, I would. Uh, it's one of those things, I'd like to have a life-size version of that. I don't know where I'd put it, but I just think it would be neat, because they're always in the background. Um, you could even try to do, put a light in here. It's, it's designed so that you can light that up. So uh, that, that might be a fun project for another day just of its own self and not, uh, not related to any other model building. But um, I'm going to, since I went against my own uh, word yesterday about putting red in the airbrush, I'm going to have to clean it out very, very, very well uh, so that I can get back to touching up any white. But I think what I'd like to do before I completely clean the red out of the airbrush is to go ahead and uh, make up the insignias and put those on the uh, put those on the shuttle because those are going to be painted on rather than using the decals. That's the uh, the the semi swastika, the, uh, the the shape that is oh so close if you know what you're looking for, but it's just far enough off to uh, get the allegory. So uh, let's pull in the shuttle and uh, start laying down. I think I've got I've got three of them. Uh, made up three of the three of the uh, templates made up and if I believe correctly there's the one on the nose there's the one on that wing and then I think there's one on one underside of the wing like you know like the opposite uh, let me see if it would be the top of this wing it would probably be the underside of that wing uh, I don't think there were I'd have to go back and maybe check that last battle again and see uh, see how elaborate when I see he's got one, I'm trying to do this one hand, that's why it's making it so difficult. He's got one on that side, that's the one I was thinking of, but he's got one on, on underneath both wings. Uh, he's got them on the tops of both wings and on the bottom of both wings. Okay, yes, there are, there are logos top and bottom of all of the wings. I just checked a, that final battle again, and yeah, 
there is, so uh, that's what we'll do. Now, unfortunately, uh, from all of the painting that I've done, I more or less have lost a lot of this detail, those lines. It's still kind of there, but not so much that I'm going to paint it black or anything. You can see the scribed lines there, but uh, they're much darker here, and I'm not... You can see those lines there? I'm not going to be able to recreate that. I might... Uh, after all is said and done, see if I can take like a pencil, maybe pencil in those lines. But I'm certainly not going to be able to paint them in any uh, by any stretch. I'm going to put a black line here where the two halves meet. And I'm going to put, uh, well I do need to paint the area where the, uh, this, there's a silver back here I need to paint. And there is a, uh, of course the, where the gun areas are on the front of the wings, I need to paint that black before I, uh, um, I mean, that's actual paint, before I put the black windows down. Alrighty, so I've just put the templates down for the uh, insignia, let's call it. Um, nice thing about this bounding box around it is you can use that to square everything up. What I did was I uh, uh, put it inside a square box, therefore I know my, my horizontal and my vertical uh, are square to the logo. And then I just line that up on the edge of the wing. I built in the right amount of space between the edge of the insignia and the edge of the wing based on uh, what Cause has got here, what Keith has put down there. So it's, it's pretty close down to the edge of the wing. And that gives me the same bounding box on both sides of the wings, top and bottom. And on the... Uh, front I just kind of eyeballed it made sure that it was touching this window frame evenly that's how we're going to do it we've got those we've got the bottom ones on as well and oh I've painted in the uh, the landing gear well too so uh, we're going to tape all of this off so we don't get any red overspray because that'll be the death of this thing if we get any red overspray then there's one red decal that goes here which is that little uh, looks like it might be a door access door frame that guy number two um but uh yeah there it is uh that will that will treat with a decal and we've got some other tiny decals to go on it again this area is or this finish is smooth enough that i don't need to uh, put any sort of under gloss under the decals they'll be just fine but then i'll put a satin coat over top of the whole thing once it's painted after the satin coat goes on, then I'll put the black uh, window frames in, or the windows in. All right, so I've got the masks on, and I've got the uh, tape areas taped off. Just sprayed some good old-fashioned Tamiya Red where those logos are, and uh, now I'm going to set this camera down, and now I'm going to uh, take the take the outside masking off, not not the uh, masks themselves, but the perimeter stuff, so that I can flip this over and do the bottom. I just don't, I don't want to have all of this floppy tape up in the air that is going to be getting in the way of everything. So uh, the, the tape that's on the front logo I can just throw away, but this stuff I need to reuse on the bottom. Again, I'm not trying to remove the actual mask itself not quite yet but I wanted to tape off a very wide area so that I didn't get any oops that's threatening to take the tape the mask off um, also want to make sure that your paint is dry before you remove your tape so you don't end up getting wet red paint on your white ship which would defeat the whole purpose of this anyway. So now we're going to flip this over and do the bottom too. Now I think I, I think he, I think he's okay just sitting them on like that. I just need to uh, again make sure I don't get any of the wet paint from what I just did. I don't want to get it on any of the white of the ship. Okay, so we tape off those three sides, and then I tape off the bottom edge, so I don't get any overspray going the other way. Okay, we do that, 
and then we do this last one. And tape this off. And top. And the fourth side. Okay, press all that down. Now we're ready to spray. Okay, flip them around and do the other one. And then we'll come back in a minute and remove these masks. Low pressure, thicker paint. There. Okay, we can take the uh, take the paper tape off. Okay, I still need to do something about those doors to make them more permanent, but there you go. That's all of the, the perimeter masking removed. We're going to let that sit and uh, give the uh, red paint a chance to get good and dry. And then we'll come and remove those masks. And then it'll just be a matter of the rest of the body decals, I think. Um, no, wait a minute. There is... I need to figure out those doors because I do need to touch up the white paint just inside of here and I think I can do that with uh, I think I can do that with just regular to me a white paint because the decal is going over that okay before we peel these uh, masks off I want to show what the mo what the uh, host brought today? Yes, the model fairies have been good to me. Uh, Steve just sent me this, the Mandalorian M1. Yay! And this will be showing up on the channel in the very very near future. Um, he said that he had gotten a few of these in. I made sure my name was on the list. I recommend you do the same, and uh, look forward to it. I see Ken has been doing some wonderful things with this kit. I don't think I'm going to try to make mine as elaborate as his, but then again, once I get into things, you never know. But uh, just wanted to give you a taste of things to come. And now we are back to removing these, and I'm going to go ahead and do this on camera. Actually, I need to put the I need to put the camera down because I'm going to need both hands for this. But we're going to lock that in position, and I'm just going to remove these one by one. Oh, look how clean that is. You can't get that out of out of the decal. Look how clean that is. Love it. So we'll go ahead and take the rest of these off. Love it. Love it. Now we'll do the bottom ones here. And the next thing to do, really, is to put the rest of the decals on. Love it. Actually, I, I probably what I should do is glue the uh, landing gear in and put the doors on. Then I could put the decals down. Okay, so that, we're done with all of that. And I think the last thing I'm going to end up doing is uh, propping that door open and, and gluing it into place. But look how clean those are. Look how clean. Yay. Okay, so it's time to put the landing gear in, and to do that, I don't want to use a CA because it's too quick. What has to happen is that this landing gear, is, it's got some wiggle room in it, and I don't want the wiggle room. So uh, what you need to do is, uh, I'm going to mix up a little bit of, uh, just a tiny bit of 5-Minute uh, Epoxy, 
and I'm going to put a dab of it in the uh, hole there where the landing gear goes and then I'm going to set the whole thing back up up on its gear so that it's sitting level and it will automatically level out the uh, uh, the gear onto the ground so to speak so what that's going to allow me to do is uh, the, well the five minute epoxy is going to allow me to do is have that built-in fudge factor so that it can kind of find its own level and set correctly before it seizes up um, as I said if I use the CA glue it would freeze in position automatically and that wouldn't help me so I just need a little tiny piece of paper here I'm gonna mix up a tiny tiny bit of this the hardest part is going to be uh, treating this like a pizza and you put the board on it and flip the whole thing over that probably will happen off camera I will leave everything sitting here just as it is so that you can see the whole process because some folks like to see the whole process I'm not uh, I'm not adverse to showing the whole process it's just sometimes it's safer for me um, to get the camera out of the way so that it's not um, interfering or I might need two hands to do something and um, I don't it's not always optimal for me to have the camera rolling at the same time okay so I've got some mixed up uh, what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of that pop it in the hole take a little bit of this get it contact pop that in the hole and just a little bit around the top of that push that in the hole now I'm going to take a board in this case I've got this board right here I need to be able to reach underneath it though first let's do this take the board flip the whole thing over like that and then transfer it to this table just going to slide it off there now that's going to allow the gear and make sure the gear is nice and flat on the table and that's going to set everything in place now we're going to give that a good 10 minutes let that cure up because I still need to put the uh, the landing gear um, door the hatches in but I can put the uh, stairs down now and they'll hit the ground and uh, good we're going to let that sit and I'm going to uh, go grab some lunch Make sure the I want to make sure the gear is flat to the table though. Look at it from underneath because the the gear kind of splays out at the rear, and I don't want it to be too too uh, cattywampus. Oop! Front gear needs to be a little has has a twist on it. So front gear. That's good. And that's sitting good and level, I think. Looking at it from underneath, I can look straight on at it and see that. Yeah, that's good. Let's stand it up straighter. Make sure that's those gear are facing forward. Like I said, there's a lot of wiggle room in those. There, okay, great, let it sit. Leave it alone, walk away. Okay, the gear is on and solid. And now the fun thing is to put the uh, landing gear flaps on it. Again, landing gear that is much too big to ever fit back inside the gear well, but we don't discuss these things. Um, we uh, just take them as they are. Now this one has to go here. That one goes here, and I'm just double checking that they go on the outside edge of the uh, gear, not on the inside edge, because they've got that weird little pivot or uh, angle pistony thing that would be in the way. Actually, if I'm not mistaken, if I remember correctly from the larger version of this I did years ago, the uh, landing gear hatch is actually two parts, and there's a smaller 
half here that also opens, which would allow the big foot to go through. But I don't think there was ever a shot uh, where they showed the gear actually coming out of the hole. It was actually it was always either deployed or or closed up. And again, the same point here. Uh, the gear, the door is big enough for the gear to come out of, but where would the piston go is my question. So uh, we are ready to glue all of these guys in. There is no sort of keyed spot for it. So it's just going to be some good old fashioned butt joinery. And it's going to go something like this. We have, just have to remember to keep the um, chamfered edge here logically where it would be so it's going to be something like that but hold straight down so I'm going to put a touch of CA here actually I think what I'd like to do is uh, put that on this side no wait a minute I can't it has to go this way yeah I just need to I probably need to uh, I'll sand the the paint off of there so that that is actually touching the uh, model in such a way that it is not see it would go in like that but it just needs to sit on the edge there is no visible hinging okay so I am getting ready to put the decals down believe it or not on the uh, ramp on the inside and outside of the stair rail here there are decals that go on either side of the uh, stairway to do that gray I probably could have just painted those gray but I'll use the decals and then the ones that go inside both of these walls now um, we'll go ahead and put those down and uh, this is about the time of day on a Friday I decide whether or not I think I'm gonna get finished in the week or whether I'm gonna need to carry it over and I think just for the sake of it I'm gonna go ahead and carry it over even if it just means a couple of days next week before we start the next thing because um, I, I could rush and finish it but I don't think that serves anybody well um, and I still haven't really done anything with the people with the exception of getting an, a nice you know base coat of red on them uh, if I were just to make some nice little stand here to go next to it I don't want to make a big whole elaborate uh, diorama with this because again that 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 uh, shoots myself in the foot as far as trying to save space but uh, I want to do something with them they're great figures so uh, I think what I'd like to do maybe make a small vignette for it um, but uh, let me go ahead and get the decals down and we'll see how much further we can get oh I, I got this you may notice the door standing up I got it uh, glued in place. I have not glued the steps in place, but I may yet, may yet end up doing that. I've got all of the door flaps on the landing gear. I have not glued in the back laser yet because that's something that can really go in completely last. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and do this. Um, yeah, let me go get some warm water and uh, we'll do some decaling. Okay, so all the decals are down, and I think we can agree that this is a great place to stop for the week. I've got the these guys down. I've got the ones that are on the uh, the uh, landing gear flaps. I've painted up the uh, lasers there. Um, everything here is at a good place to leave it. I tell you, getting those ones in, getting those the uh, inside sidewall decals in, I feel like I've earned some sort of honorary black belt in decal laying to kind of the way that those have to kind of go in and around and fit and you know, unfold and go behind doors and all that they are deceptively simple uh, they look well let me say they're deceptively hard they look a lot simpler than they are uh, to put in but I've got both of them in and uh, I think we're at a spot where we can lay this. I'm kind of concerned about this. I know you are if you've been watching this, this, this seam right here. I think we can dress that up with some black vinyl. I am kind of, uh, I'm kind of uh, concerned about how une uh, uneven it is. 
But I think once the final black vinyl goes on, I think that's going to snap everything into into focus. So uh, this is where we're going to leave it for the week. And uh, we can come back and pick this up next time. And that's where we're going to leave the first week on the Visitor Shuttle. It's a great little kit. I highly recommend it. It's again, Cosmic Scale Models. Keith has not let me down yet. It's a marvelous 132 scale. I want to pop this next to the uh, shuttlecraft, the, the Trek shuttle, and start lining up my 132 kits. But, uh, yeah, I started working on the little visitors. Started working on them. Um, again, with this new pace that I'm on, a little bit, a little bit every day, and that's enough. So uh, we'll be finishing this off next week. Might even finish it off early next week and start on something else. But uh, we'll let that happen as it does. So until next week, y'all be safe, be smart, uh, stay warm. It's cold out there, honey. It's cold outside, and um, we'll see you here next time.